So let's go over to our little drum group here. Again, sounds I wouldn't normally choose. Not necessarily the way I would do my drum setup. I'm trying to make a situation that would be hard for me to mix in a situ in a way so that I can show you kind of how you how you would enhance these things um, or these sounds in a more negative situation, not necessarily your prime situation that you mix in. So right here we have a percussion uh, loop that we made. That's with the kick. Now, straight from the start, I hear this frequency with the snare. That that snare is hurting my head when I hear it. I'm just like, ow, ow, ow. And there's normally a frequency in around the 3.400 range that needs to be cut in a lot of things. Vocals, drums, synths, a lot of sounds make a terrible frequency there and other spots, but I, I have a feeling it's going to be around there. If I'm wrong, I, I really don't care. If you have the opportunity to be able to control all your sounds individually, if this was just one audio track, we would have to do it differently. But because I can actually go into the snare right here. So this is this, this is the snare we're using. This is the sound. I can, I can affect just the snare. I don't need to affect the shakers or anything like that. That's the only way I really like to mix. I have mixed songs for people where they give me just like the stem of the drums and they don't have the snare and the hi-hat and the kick separated. And that's just a completely different debacle. But right now we're gonna talk that you have the situation where you can affect the snare and the hi-hats separately, things like that. So first things first, let's get our EQ and let's EQ some of this jazz. What I'm gonna do again, the FabFilter Pro Q, you can use whatever you like. That's going to be our snare. I'm gonna solo our snare just so we can hear it. First things first, we don't need this low end, not even a little bit. And so a good way I like to judge where your low end should be with certain things like this is to listen to the entire mix and you solo it, listen to where it comes in, what you don't need. But for tutorial sake, we're just going to listen to the, the solo of the snare and see what we can take out. So some life of the snare is going to be necessary in this lower end range of like 200 hertz or so. But we can cut out, I think, like, like 105. Not really affecting the snare too much. And then we're going to want to cut out some of these highs. One thing about the high end that people always forget is we can only hear as humans past like 14,000 hertz. And so your ear is going to be tricked. If you grab a high cut and you make it super steep and you solo it and you go up to 1400. Oh, we can totally still hear that. No, you can't because it's curving up. So you're still getting some 10,000 hertz. You're still getting some 12,000 hertz. You're getting all these other hertz. You're not just getting 14. If you were to create like a brick wall that we can do. See how you can't hear it now? Wow. Magic. <laughs> you don't need those hertz. And so it's okay to create like sharp cuts. I don't care what anyone says and, and cut cut things out because compressors and EQs and things have gotten good enough to do that. But we don't we're not going to use a brick wall. Never really leave a brick wall. I think a brick wall is really useful for either trying to make a crazy sound or um, just trying to hear frequencies like we just did. So what we can do, though, is bring a brick wall up all the way to 30,000 hertz and then just start bringing it down until we hear a change in the sound. And that's where we can kind of know that we don't need to cut off anymore because all we're trying to get rid of is the frequencies we do not need for the sound in general, not even the mix. Right there. So about 12,500 hertz. I don't hear a difference, but look how much it's taking off. If you look over here, all of this noise unnecessary noise. We don't need it there. For some sounds like vocals and stuff, we, we are going to need that there just to, to mixing sake. Like even though we can't hear it, there's certain things you do kind of need up there for the most part and you wouldn't cut them off drastically. But, but this, like, like we can really, I'm going to do a, a negative 24. And so we know at this 1700, 17,000 Hertz that we're at right now, which is this dot, this bell that we're at, 
not up here. See, it's curving off way past 10, over almost into eight. And so we're gonna wanna raise this up until it's about at that. The curve ends at that, or it starts to cut in a tiny bit past that 12. So now that's what we're hearing. Just slight, the slight cutoff. Very slight, very smooth. That's all you need to cut off. But now we need to make it sound a lot better. Now we need to get off that, that darn frequency. It's gonna drive me crazy. Let's go find it. So what you wanna do is gonna make a bell and you're gonna wanna boost that mofo and make it real steep. I like to make a bell with a, uh, a 14 dB cut off there. So it's it's grabbing more frequencies in a steeper range. Make uh, Turn your, your, your cue up and then turn your volume down of your headphones because it's gonna suck. Okay, this might even distort in the, the video here. You wanna raise up the frequencies until until your, your heart hurts with the sound you hear. And normally it's gonna be around 3,400. Oh no. Oh boy. There it is. 4,100 hertz. I was a little off. Now you're gonna turn your volume back up. An insanely loud noise. And now you're gonna wanna cut it out until it doesn't affect the sound anymore. Cause you don't want that sound, dude. You don't want that in there. You can even see it in the frequencies popping out here. So what's interesting is when I cut it out, there's like another frequency being created that I don't like. And that, that's very common when you cut frequencies up here. It just gets really annoying. Let's see. That should be reasonably good for that frequency. Now I'm gonna do it again, make another bell, boost it, turn my volume down, and we're gonna find another one. I thought I heard something up here. We'll see. Twenty-two, thirty-four, exactly. Let's go. So there's still one up here that I really don't like. I can almost see it. I'm not even gonna look for it. I'm just gonna cut it because I can. I can pretty much see it. This is something else you can also do is just run a bell from the bottom until you, you don't hear the sound you don't like anymore. So it, 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 is, it is very slight and so I'm not going to do too much there. I'll, we'll start with a negative six. Yeah, I was seeing that 3,000. I don't like this one either. Oh yeah. It's always really confusing when you're cutting frequencies out like this because you can get really caught up in just continuously hearing bad frequencies. And so sometimes it's good just to stop 
it'd be like, okay, I'm going to cut those out and move on. Cause uh, I can, I can hear bad frequencies all day. And the next thing you know, you don't have a sound anymore. Cause you just cut the entire sound out. And so try not to let yourself get confused, but I think that's good overall. So we're going to listen to it with it off and on and see if there's any difference that we actually made. Yes, there is. So there's still a frequency I don't like in there, but I'm going to leave it for now because I can always come back to it later. It might not be harmful in the end of the mix. I think it will be, but it's kind of somewhere up in this high end. Maybe I'm not doing something right with one of these bells, but basically that's kind of going to be your mixing forever. You make some cuts, you're going to make some changes, and then you always have to come back because you hear it again or it's getting pushed through a compressor on the master and it really doesn't like it and you got to fix it. And so right now it sounds fine we can we can work with it now let's move on to our hi-hats uh, or no our shakers there's two of them these suckers Ooh. after listening to that horrific snare ah uh, it's a joy to listen to this damn shaker this is gonna be easy we're just gonna basically cut out the low end we don't want to do too much maybe we could i like i like to on my hi-hats and stuff just gently cut off that high end because they can get a little too invasive at the end of the mix and their sounds are very sharp which is normally what you want but sometimes i just find them too sharp and too invasive especially end mix where you're like why are my hi-hats too quiet but they hurt my ears and they're not working properly normally it's because you just don't need all of that high end i'm gonna roll off some of these highs definitely roll off these lows because you might not see any frequencies but it doesn't matter just roll them off until you hear the sound not being affected. So right there, almost all thousand Hertz and lower can be cut. We don't need them. Now the high end, this is where it's gonna get a little iffy. Let's do that brick wall thing again. Now we're listening for sound that we can audibly hear, not see, audibly hear. Right there. So you can kind of hear that. We want that, but we don't need that much of it. Again, it's that 14 hertz, man. Science is crazy. All right, so now that we're at the 14 hertz, let's cut off, you know, the 18. Let's do a 24. Let's, yeah, that's fine. Now, what does that alone sound like? Let's listen. It's really not taking off that much, and it's going to make it fit in the mix a lot better. So let's listen to this percussion. See, when I, when I took off or bypassed the EQ we just did on these hi-hats, just that little bit off the high end makes it sit so much better underneath that snare. Listen. I'm going to remove this, uh, bypass this EQ now. Sometimes you need to remove some shine so that, that you're not invading the mix with your shakers or your snares or vocals. So now we have these percussions with the kick. Let's see how they sound EQ'd. They're not compressed yet, but EQ'd. I'm going to take the EQ off the snare. Let's see what the difference is. Oh my God. So much better, so much better. Let's try the shaker. So you can always go back later in the shaker if you want to make it brighter and just roll up that that high cut. Uh, but right now, I love it. I think it sounds pretty good. Um, not the best sounds, again, but for what we started with, especially that snare. That snare was brutal. A brutal snare. I legit pretty much went through my samples and found the trashiest snare I could find. Now that we have these both EQ'd, we're going to go in the full group up here and we're going to EQ the snare and the hi-hat with the other music if we need to, which we don't need to do yet, but then we're going to compress, which is going to be a big deal. So in the next video, we're going to be compressing the percussion.